Hello everyone, Satorn here giving you another quick Vicky 3 video, this time on distribution of power, kind of going through each one of these and seeing is there one that's better than the rest or one that you guys tend to use more often. Let's get into it. Starting from the top, Autocracy, you get a ton of authority, which you know in my previous videos, I do like a lot of authority. Uh, 30 legitimacy from including the head of state and government, so that's pretty easy to do. But the plus 50% government ideology penalty is pretty big, so trying to get other things passed could be quite difficult with that. That's, that's the hefty, that's the most severe one. You get plus 120 legitimacy from government clout, which I'll show you over here. So this is pretty much... When you uh, see the breakdown here, you can see your total uh, clout of government plus 35. That's pretty much whoever you have in your government and totaling their clout together. It uh, gives you a little bit of bonus to your legitimacy. And then back to autocracy, you can see here you have a plus 50% political strength of aristocrats. That's going to make landowners and that interest group very tough to deal with. So you eventually you probably do want to get out of autocracy into maybe oligarchy, which I do like more if you're not going to worry about voting. Here you lose 100 authority. You get the plus 10 legitimacy uh, from including head of state. I think that's less than autocracy. Yeah, it's quite a bit. And then, But you have government uh, size allowance. You can actually have more people or more interest groups within your government with different uh, views. And and you won't get such a big penalty, which is nice. Uh, you have plus 120 legitimacy from government clout, which we explained before. And then the political strength, you can see the aristocrats get the 50%, which is uh, you know the same as we have in autocracy. However, the capitalists now start to get some power as well. So they're not as strong. It's still your wealthy will definitely be stronger than the rest. But uh, it starts to peel away a little bit from the upper land voting so now we get into voting which is really good uh i kind of head this direction every game I, oligarchy like i said if you don't want to do voting i would go that way otherwise uh voting i think is pretty cool because every time an election rolls around and completes then you get a free government change which is pretty pretty powerful uh definitely when you're trying to change a bunch of laws so that's why i feel like the game is also trying to not have you up in autocracy and oligarchy but more into one of these voting options uh, here you get 100 authority still, which is great for land voting and your government size plus one plus 20 percent ideology penalty. So that is a little steep, but not uh, as severe as autocracy plus 100 legitimacy from government clout plus 40 legitimacy from votes. So now votes will also give legitimacy, which is pretty interesting. And you can see here the spread changes now. The aristocrats are at the 50 political strength, but the capitalists are at 25. Clergymen now become also plus 25 political strength and officers vote. So kind of everybody, the intelligentsia, your arm forces uh industrialists they all kind of now start getting a little bit more power which is good uh, this is still favoring the aristocrats still but it's not too bad and on to wealth voting this is usually where i end up in my playthroughs plus 100 authority is very good uh you know uh, the other options plus 200 so 100 is not that bad uh, political strength for votes plus 40 now you also get a wealth threshold of plus 25 so really the more wealth your pops have those are the ones that are going to be more eligible to vote which i think is okay uh, plus one government size allowance, plus 20% ideology penalty, plus 75 legitimacy from government clout, and plus 65 from votes. So here votes are actually worth more. Yep, it looks like in wealth voting. So uh, this is the one I think is kind of the middle of the road, and I like to sit here for quite a bit in my playthrough. Uh, but as you play... You're going to see that your interest groups and just in general, I feel like I always start getting revolutions towards census suffrage or universal suffrage. So uh, I feel, again, the game is kind of gearing you always towards these, especially once you start getting into voting. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you guys agree with the same. But these aren't bad. But I just, again, I feel like by the end of the game, I'm usually into census suffrage or universally, even though I would like to probably stick around wealth voting or maybe even go back to oligarchy. Either way, let's take a quick look at census suffrage. We do uh, lose our authority now. We're at plus 50. You see here the political strength from literate pop. So now it's not about wealth necessarily. It's also about if they're literate enough. Uh, and then all, the wealth threshold goes down to plus 15. Government size allowance is plus 1. Government ideology penalties plus 10%. And then you get the legitimacy from clout as well as votes. The votes start to get stronger as well as the, you know, the government clout goes down. So you can see, you know, just a distribution of power. Now it's going more to the people. Same thing for universal suffrage is even more. Uh, plus 20 political strength from votes. And then uh, plus one government size allowance. Plus 25 legitimacy for government clout. Plus 110 legitimacy from votes. So you can see right now here, uh, you know, the ideology penalty is gone. There is also no more political strength uh, regarding wealth or anything like that. And then anarchy I've never done before. So again, 
again, if you have, put it in the comments. A uh, minus 50% authority seems, I don't know, it just makes me ill. Uh, plus one universal pop political strength. Okay, I can see that. So everyone now uh, has some political strength. Minus 75% political strength from wealth. So that's, yeah, so all your people who are wealthy, they have no political strength pretty much. Uh, plus two government size allowance. So your government's pretty much packed with probably every interest group and plus a hundred legitimacy from government class. So there may be some situations where, uh, anarchy and <laughs> anarchism is good to go. Uh, yeah, if you guys think so, put it down, definitely let me know. I'm really interested on this one, how the community is playing this. I hope you all found this video useful on distribution of power. So my go-tos are oligarchy. If I'm not worried about voting, the 100 authority is nice. It's not 200 from autocracy, but it's still decent. Uh, the legitimacy is nice to have with the head of state. Again, a uh, government size, the minus 10% government ideology penalty is very nice as well. You can have some more uh, interest groups within your government. And then, you know, the aristocrats being at 50% political strength isn't the best, but capitalists do get some there at the 25%. So I think it's a pretty good option. If I'm going to do voting, I go wealth voting the 100 authority again is nice it's really middle of the road right uh you get the 100 authority but you uh don't get that crazy uh amount of uh going towards the aristocrats and you know the pretty much the capitalist the like the wealthy here right you can see the wealth threshold could be anybody it doesn't necessarily need to be the aristocrats at this point eventually if you get, start getting better jobs it could be industrialists and things like that so i really feel like this is middle of the road which is good and then eventually census suffrage uh will end up probably being forced upon you uh or you could fight against it but it may be painful so uh, if you like this type of information, hit that like, subscribe, notification button. They're free. And as always, for the swarm.